the Charleston. It was not only a dance craze, but it was a very famous song that created the dance craze, written by James P. Johnson in 1923. Um, it's still a, a standard today in the Lindy Hop tradition. Um, let's walk it through. Uh, this is a kind of a tune where you just got to learn the little pieces one at a time and then put the whole thing together. Starts with a B flat chord. You bar the second or the first two strings at the first fret, second fret of the third, and the third fret of the fourth string. And as I've said in the past, to get this good, clean sounding B flat, drop your wrist, keep that finger flat. You want to drop your wrist so these two fingers will arch over the top of these two strings. So it starts with a B flat, goes to a D seventh. Then it goes to a G seventh. Now here's where you got to do a stretch. Little pinky up here on the fifth fret of the first string. So it goes B flat, D seventh, G seventh. Now there isn't one standard strum through this whole thing. That's the interesting and yet complex thing about this piece. You got to learn it one strum at a time. So it's down, down, up, down, 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 up, down. Then it goes to a C7. Once again with that extension to the little pinky up on the fifth fret. Then it goes to an F7. Same extension. Then it goes back to a B flat. C sharp diminish. Then F seventh. Now there's a little melody fragment here that goes. And the way I'm getting it in my strum is I go down, up, down, up, down. So you gotta coordinate that little pinky with the right hand strum. So taking up that far we go, D7, C7, F7, then B flat, those are just down strums, B flat, C sharp diminished, then F7. Then it repeats over again. Now here's where it changes. Go to an F. And it goes. So I'm putting that ring finger on the third fret of the second string. So it goes. Then you go to an A seventh with the ring finger on the third fret of the second again and go. That's the first fret. So it goes. Then go into a D seventh. to an F7. Notice this little play off of this one note here. So it goes uh, F, then A7, then D7, then F7. So it goes One of my most favorite parts of the whole song. Then it goes back and repeats that first section. D7. Now here's your wind up. It goes to B flat seventh. You bar the first fret all the way across. Middle finger goes on the second fret of the third string. So it goes B flat. B flat seventh, and you got to get your little pinky up here on the third fret of this first string. So it goes, then go to an E flat. Index fingers on the first fret, third fingers on the third fret of the third string. I put my little pinky. You can do it this way if you wish. I do it this way for an E flat, or you can do it this way. So it goes. Uh, And that's an F sharp seventh. 
Once again, the little pinky plays off the third fret of the first string. So it goes B flat, B flat seventh, E flat, F sharp seventh. Then go back to B flat, C sharp diminished, F seventh, and then back to B flat, E flat, B flat. So the ending part goes. There you have the Charleston. It's um, like I say, it's it's a tune where you got to just take little pieces and learn them one at a time, memorize them over and over again, until you get the whole piece put together. It's going to take a little while, but once you get it together, it's it's a lot of fun to play, and it breaks away from just standard strum 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 continuous strumming patterns through a song, it gives you a, a solo melody chord piece that you can play. So have fun with it and happy strumming. I want to hear some of you out there doing this song. Also, I got one video post for Paris Nocturne. I'd love to have other people do a video post of Paris Nocturne as well, or any songs for that matter. I, I'm inviting anybody out there to do video posts and get them up on my, on my uh, channel. Love to see them and love to hear what all of you are doing out there. Have fun and happy strumming. <laughs>